tell me you're moving back here, please. I'm not. What are we gonna do? Do you masturbate still? Or... I, you know, I, actually, I wanted you to do... ask you. Would you mind if I actually borrow a couple bucks? I just thought when you came over my house, it was to hang out. Hi, welcome to What the Flick. Christy, Alonzo, and Ben. We're talking about a little indie called Donald Cried. If you like mullets, this is the movie for you. That's ben, good, please good, describe it. Good Massachusetts mullet. <laughs> Rhode uh, Island. It's Rhode Island. Warwick, Rhode Island. They're roadies. Very <laughs> similar hair, yeah. though. <laughs> well, Warwick, Rhode Island is like four minutes from Massachusetts. There you go. So. <laughs> They're all four minutes from Massachusetts. Uh, so this is from a filmmaker, and I, Christy just said it, this movie was first a short and now expanded into a, a, a full-length movie, although it's, it's still less than... Uh, Fewer? It's like 82 minutes. minutes. It's 85. It's no, under. Less or fewer. Under. Oh, that, I, don't, I never know that one. <laughs> it's not 90 minutes. Um, and, uh, from uh, Chris Avedisian is his name, and he's, he plays Donald in it. Uh, uh, and, and it is the story of, uh, of a, a friend of his, Pete, who comes back to town because his grandmother, who was living in a home, uh, died. And Donald was his uh, best friend in high school. But Pete, uh, needing help, he has lost his wallet and has no money. Uh, reluctantly approaches Donald uh, to help him uh, deal with his, he's come up from the city in New York, uh, to help him deal with this difficult day uh, after his mother has passed, his grandmother's passed away, and, and it is their reconnection uh, over a couple of days. I don't like this place. I don't like who I am when I'm back here. You know what I would change about myself? We're fine, buddy. My competitiveness. Go home, man. You're getting weak in the city. Jesus Christ, man. Are you all right, man? Can you please look at me for a second, Pete? I want you to look at me. <laughs> now we're getting to it. Now we're getting down to it. This is a, a character we know, mm. right? He's Napoleon Dynamite. He's every Danny McBride character ever. <laughs> you know, just like the overgrown, clueless, bloviating man-child. Man right, but... Uh, Yes. But they but, get into it in different ways. Yes, different ways, yeah. because this guy is more like the, those Danny McBride characters are over the top. They're, they're, mm -hmm. all, they're satirical, really. Yeah, this and, guy is tragically believable. Th this guy is tra tra <laughs> really tragically believable. There's a, unquestioned there's sadness to him and his situation and his life and his desperation then to reconnect with Pete, despite Pete's for the first, well, all of the movie mm -hmm. in many ways, mm -hmm. reluctance and abhorrence of this guy in a sense, because Pete is, you know, he's in New York, he works at a bank, yeah, okay. he's he's super condescending. <laughs> super condescending, but but Donald is he's super condescending, but Donald is brutally inappropriate. Mm. Uh, so like you don't like you, the moment you think Pete is like oh Pete cut him a break, and then you're like nope don't don't cut him a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I, my, I think my elevator pitch for this one is if Todd Salons directed After Hours, because <laughs> because okay. uh, you start out sort of empathizing with Pete and just this notion of like. You know he doesn't have his, he, he doesn't have his wallet. He doesn't have keys to get in the house. Like he's trapped in this limbo, and he's in his small town. And the only person he can turn to is Donald, who he has this past with, and who is, as you said, just clearly sort of inappropriate and, and a very odd duck. And uh, and and so you it gets more and more tense, and then ultimately you start realizing, oh wait. Pete is also a piece of shit, and in fact, worse than Donald, and he's to blame for a lot of what's happening to other, you know, people in the film, and so it's it, it's this interesting journey that you go on yeah, with these the, the two. The shift of sympathies, <laughs> right. Yeah, so, yeah, so the man-child character, it's often, like, celebrated, like, in an mm -hmm. Adam Sandler movie, or mocked openly for being ridiculous, but yeah, this, this one finds a humanity. Yeah. There's clearly a lot of affection for this guy, since Chris Evadesian, yeah, he directed it, he co-wrote it, he stars in it, he clearly likes this person, and there's a decency, right? And underlying, you like movies about, about people who are kind. Yes, but Donald, this guy is kind fundamentally, although he's super of, annoying. But I mean, he means he well. He means well. <laughs> I, I, had different, I had a different reaction to yeah. to to, to uh, Donald than you guys. I mean, I ultimately, you know, he's desperate to reconnect, right? I mean, he has this this resentment that he'll never tap toward his stepfather, toward Pete, right? Um, uh, but he is. He is he is so rude and so inappropriate. I mean, he is much of his isolation is caused by him. That ultimately, you imagine some people who uh, might have wanted to spend. You can't spend time with that guy. You he's a social moron. He's a social moron, <laughs> and and it does. It's not just that he's. You know, you can't. It's not the kind of guy you can go, oh, Alonso. He doesn't know what to say, <laughs> but he's fun. Like it's oh, he doesn't know what to say, and he's and he sometimes is mean and a liar. Um, so, not me. Right, not you. Uh, <laughs> You're just so, a liar. 
<laughs> but but then you do feel that yeah. sympathy for him. So that what makes it to me that that's what sort of raised the movie uh, up a couple of levels too was that that it, you can't quite you could never quite figure out what to think of these guys. Yeah, the movie it's not like the movie paints O'Donnell as this poor victim or anything like that. I mean, yeah, uh, you you see why he is isolated from the people around him and and he is the kind of person that in real life you too would probably not want to right. like be around for too long. But at the same time, in once we get to know more about his relationship with Pete and the context of all that stuff, you at least sort of feel for him even though the movie it never backs down in making him a real piece of work. Yeah, know? there was a moment in it, there's a family scene in the movie that caused it toward the back half of the movie and that I had a real like, oh crap moment. Like, <laughs> like it was, so that was a really nice turn because it told you more about Donald than you expected. It was, in some ways, shocking, even though nothing shocking mm -hmm. happened in it, but I did not expect it. I did not expect anyone lived in that house. I you know, there was just, I was yes. just a moment of like, Really? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. that. Right. Yeah, right, yeah, right. It's a really vivid sense of place in the interiors, if you notice the, mm. the posters on Donald's oh, wall. Oh, man, yeah. yeah his Jesus. clothing. Yeah. Um, at one point in their weird long night together, they go to a fundraiser where a bunch of their high school friends are, and it's just like, I guess not mocking, I don't think it's condescending, but it's just a vivid sense of like small town, 80s vibe. They're playing like... Wang Chung <laughs> is just like and dancing horribly and like getting drunk because they can't tolerate Taking being two there. drinks at once. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it very efficiently in its There's short amount of time creates this very vivid sense of place. Yeah, it's, it's a lived in world. There's for, sure. a, for better or for worse. Yeah. The way uh, Donald early in the movie describes as a poster of a porn star and oh, the God. way he describes meeting the porn star at some event, obviously, <laughs> is really. I mean, that, that, I, that I imagine is what the short was. Like, the short, <laughs> like that, because that's too, so well written and it's so, it's perfect. It's such a, and it's painful. Every word out of his mouth yes. is painful. Like, please, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I've you're never not, seen that you're movie before. You're I've never gonna, seen that. Yeah, Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and also just the way later in the movie, at one point, Don, you know, when they say, you know, meet in New York, like you, everything about Don, he's like, oh, that's not. Like, Donald right. is not leaving. Mm. That, this is where he is comfortable. You know, he's self-aware. Like yeah, that's something that's that right. those other characters lack, the ones that I compare this guy mm. to. They lack self-awareness. He knows he's pathetic. And underneath the bravado and the, you know, the glommingness, like, he knows he's sad and he's stuck, and that makes him different and provides more depth to him than maybe you expect at the onset. So, yeah, it's good. I think I want to raise my number. Yeah, I think I want to, too. Okay. Well, well I, that, I said eight. I, I was already on board I'm going to say eight then, too, just for the sake of math. I was at 7.7. .7. Yeah. All right. Eight. You want to say eight sure, just to make me not have to think on camera? Higher, but eight's, cool. a, eight's a solid. <laughs> this, deserves, this deserves an eight. It's good. Eight. It's really nice. It's at 100%. Woo! Um, mm. So people who have seen this movie liked it. So, because yeah. uh, uh, I guess Armand White hasn't reviewed it yet. Ho! Oh. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, but uh, obviously uh, Chris Avedisian is a is a talent because he's, he's he delivers a really solid performance in addition to writing. Yeah. Yeah. First first feature, right? I think it's first feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow. from the right. short. Yeah. Enjoy. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>